Hey everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this video. I hope you guys are doing really wonderful. And so we will be taking a look at what is going on out there across the Atlantic Basin as well as what we could possibly see happen this month. We're now in the month of August and things are about to get pretty interesting. And so before I go into details, please do subscribe if you haven't yet done so and tap the bell so that you never miss an important update. All right, so first things first, we are looking at what is happening out there. So there is some shower and thunderstorm activity well off the east coast of the U.S. out there. We also have our two disturbances, 96 and 97L. Let's take a look at them. And 96L has been struggling. Notice that it is no longer highlighted in red, but orange, indicating a decrease in that formation chance. So it hasn't been getting itself together. There's no defined center of circulation, and the chance has dropped uh, between yesterday and now from 80% down down to 50%. So that is a 30% decrease in that chance of it becoming a tropical cyclone out there. And why you may ask, because conditions are not very conducive and 97L is accelerating into cooler water. So that shouldn't become anything of great concern. And so why is 96L struggling? Well, there is some dry air in the region and the wind shear isn't very conducive either. And uh, models are in agreement that this will continue to struggle because look at this, that green area represents tropical storm force winds and only a few of them are saying that hey this will manage to become a tropical storm and notice that they don't show anything really strong either because uh, as it is going to continue northward it will continue into cooler waters water is getting gradually cooler with latitude and then eventually if it doesn't get itself together by a certain point when it is uh, these temperatures are below that threshold of around 26 degrees we won't see this becoming anything out there this won't become emily so let's see if it will actually pull through but it is not in a high conducive environment and I actually have my doubts about this becoming something now but uh, let's see what's going to be happening with it and regardless of the outcome it is not a threat to land for now and so here we're looking at the vicinity of the South Caribbean and Northern South America and uh, there is some activity in the Southwestern Caribbean right now and also in some spots in Colombia, Venezuela, Guyana, nothing crazy though uh, as we head further up north here we can see that things get a lot drier and quieter across the Caribbean. Now there is a tropical wave moving toward the central caribbean so that might up the rainfall chance for some areas especially as we head to this afternoon but for now we're seeing that most areas are pretty dry across the caribbean especially heading to the lesser antilles uh going down to barbados trinidad tobago a bit of cloud cover in the vicinity of, of the bahamas going to some sections of eastern cuba maybe for some spots in jamaica hispaniola as well and even down into the abc islands there might be a bit of cloud cover but nothing crazy going on uh, maybe the most being an isolated shower or so but over in Central America there is a bit more activity so there's another tropical wave which is entering the eastern Pacific and because it is in the area it helps to induce some uh, more unstable conditions so it helps to induce more of that shower and thunderstorm activity and especially as we head to this afternoon we could definitely see a lot going on over there and uh, speaking of the Pacific invest 96 e has actually intensified into tropical storm Dora this morning and so it will continue to intensify, could uh, likely to become a hurricane. And uh, the good news, though, is that it is going to be accelerating further and further from land. So let's look at the rainfall map. So as this becomes more colorful, more rainfall activity is expected. So as we head through today, Central America, Northern South America exp uh, expected to experience or receive the most rainfall activity. Maybe some isolated thunderstorms in some spots across Cuba, Jamaica, Hispaniola, Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, and maybe for the Northern Leeward Islands uh, of there, which has been pretty dry. So hopefully that actually comes true. But for most other areas, it should be a pretty hot and sunny day today. Going on to Euro, Euro is in agreement with this. Northern South America going to Central America expected to receive the most rainfall, of course, not for everywhere across Northern South America. And then the possibility of seeing some isolated thunderstorms across parts of the Greater Antilles and going up to, Baham to the Bahamas and Florida. And so, guys, as I said earlier, we definitely have to keep our eyes on the tropics. And so uh, this is the kind of activity we see, uh, the amount of tropical storms and hurricanes that occur each month. And this is based on 
on data from 1944 to 2020. So from this graph, we can deduce that as we head into around mid-August, going into September and uh, early October is when the most activity occurs during the hurricane season. And we are now in August, as I said. So what does this mean? This means we definitely have to keep our eyes out there. So uh, what happens is that we have these stronger tropical waves managing to reach the Caribbean and uh, under the right conditions, they manage to intensify into tropical storms and even hurricanes. Now, as we look at the sea surface temperature map for the Western Atlantic, the Caribbean, the Gulf of Mexico, heading over into parts of the Atlantic Ocean, here we can see that there are these pink shadings, 30, 31 degrees Celsius across a lot of areas, especially in the Gulf of Mexico. So if anything should move into the Gulf with other environmental conditions, such as the wind shear being conducive, this means trouble. It is as plain and as simple as that. And I'm not going to sugarcoat it because the potential is there to see crazy intensification. And that is not something foreign to the Gulf because it has happened before. Last year is really the only year between 2020 and now where there wasn't anything. Matter of fact, nothing developed in the month of August because of uh, so much dry air out there in that above average wind shear. So nothing developed in August last year. But 2021, there was Hurricane Ida and there was also Hurricane Grace. But Ida rapidly intensified into a Cat 4 in the Gulf. And then heading into 2020, there was Hurricane Laura. So Laura rapidly became a Cat 4, not far from Cat 5 at the time of landfall in Louisiana. So, uh, and I distinctly remember one of the key messages from the NHC saying unsurvivable storm surge. It was that crazy, guys. So in 2019, Dorian didn't make its way into the Gulf, but it did develop in late August and it became a Cat 5, the strongest to date outside the Caribbean Sea and Gulf of Mexico in terms of wind speeds uh, out there. So let's see what's going to be happening this hurricane season. But as I said, guys, the temperatures are off the charts. And in terms of where exactly we'll be affected, that is unknown. But what we can deduce is where tropical cyclones usually go. On this map here, it shows the typical tracks, the origin points of systems. You see that they come from the main development region, from those tropical waves, and they may uh, they may move north of the Caribbean, they may enter the Caribbean and head to the Gulf, and when they do, there is just no going around. Somebody will be impacted. So uh, hopefully, we just have to hope for the best this hurricane season, but also keep in mind the fact that those ocean temperatures are off the charts, and uh, we can quickly see something jump from Cat 1 to a major hurricane. Trust me, it has happened before, and I do not doubt it happening again this hurricane season. So this isn't to uh, bring fear into the picture, it is just to bring in preparedness because we have to recognize the fact that these are natural disasters we're talking about and we are heading into that zone when it is pretty active across the Atlantic basin. So even though they cannot be prevented, we can do our best to prepare for impacts should our area be impacted. And uh, it only takes one really. So what if it is an above average hurricane season and many of the strong systems do not actually affect anywhere? So it only takes one. Last year, that was in despite the season producing less activity than expected. So it was an average season and it was a La Nina season. So nothing developed in August, as I said earlier, and that was because of the presence of those very hostile conditions, particularly with that abundant dry air and dust out there. So uh, that really helped to suppress a lot of activity. And uh, Hurricane Ian, though, in September did a number on Florida. It resulted in absolute devastation and was a Category 5 hurricane. It wasn't initially a cat five but in the postseason analysis some data was found that actually showed that the cyclone had sustained winds of a category five hurricane before impacting florida so guys we don't know what is on the road we don't know what exactly is on the horizon but i'm here to keep you posted so that you're not caught off guard by these systems guys but at the end of the day uh it all comes down to our individual choice of preparedness whenever we're actually going to be impacted by something so that is what i wanted to share with you in this this update and I hope you found it to be quite informative but if you have any questions feel free to leave them down in the comments I will respond as best and as soon as I can and as always remember to be weatherwise.